Okay, I have been asked to do this demo repeatedly. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do it because I'm paying it forward because I've watched a whole lot of tutorials on my own. So, first off, paint your cup. Choose whatever oceanic color you would care for. Um, I have my husband do this for me, so, you know, I have help. Um, and then you're gonna print out your tattoo, your temporary tattoo paper. That is what it looks like after it's been fussy cut. You're supposedly supposed to be able to cut it out on your silhouette, but <laughs> you know how that goes. Anyway, so I did it by hand. This is Glenda, who shall be our camera person. And okay. here's a little aside that's very helpful. Um, don't ask me where I found it, because I don't remember, but there's a 30 ounce, um, like Yeti members mark, which by the way, I use members mark, um, template somewhere. I, I, I'll try to figure it out, but you know, my brain. Anyway, this is what I do to get ready to, uh, to cut it is I, this helps with spacing and sizing and all that other happy stuff. So Vicki, yes, this is your cut being born. Uh, this was my first step. And then I put it on obviously the tattoo paper in the background and printed it and cut it. And now onto the next thing. Okay. Here we go. Here's my fuzzy cut things and here is my cup that I showed you earlier. So I showed you that I already set up my design in a template to give me an idea of where I'd like placement of what. So then here you take the Silhouette brand tattoo paper. You're going to do this much the same as you would for on your skin. In fact, it's exactly the same. There's no weirdness to it. You just need to make sure you get off all the little plastic pieces because otherwise it won't stick if you leave your plastic on it. So, do, 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 do. Hopefully I'll be editing this later. Okay, or I'll get lazy and I won't. So let's see. Try not to get too much of the sticky stuff on you because then it won't stick as well to your surface. Of course, if I could listen to my own self. All right, here we go. Oi, okay. It's so sticky. The reason I like this over um, water slide is, first of all, I hate failing at things, and I failed at water slide the first time I tried it, so therefore it's now my enemy. Uh, it is cheaper, but I figure if I keep redoing all the water slide, in the end it comes out to be the same price, because <laughs> I'll have to do water slide three times for every one of this. And this, in case you can't tell, comes with a nice sticky carrier. So you can place it wherever you want without it moving around or trying to take it off the carrier at the same time. So I find for me, it's a huge difference. I suspect it's actually the same product, except this one has a carrier. And that's the way that they made it user-friendly for doing tattoos for kids and such, because I can't imagine water slide would have been too easy. So, all right, I think it's denuded, let's see. All right, so in my design, I decided I wanted you know, sort of like, I think it sort of had her coming up here. So you take it, you stick it down, which by the way, you could seal this before you do this. And if you're going to be putting things on here with transfer tape, I would suggest that you do seal it first because the biggest thing that sucks is when it pulls off, um, your underlying spray paint. So this isn't such an issue with this because as you'll see with water slide paper, you kind of go down this way and it's not sticking to this. Now, I had a very tragic, upsetting experience <laughs> with a beautiful wood cup I had made that I was transferring over and I was peeling off the last little bit of, of uh, vinyl and it took up all the way down to the, the silver and it, it was horrible, so I had to start over. So, okay, that's on. So now you would take your wet washcloth, stick it on there and just kind of zhuzh it around a little bit, about 10 seconds maybe. I wait until it starts to move on its own. It's like water slide in that the carrier will come off when it's ready, when it's darn good and ready. So see like right now, it looks wet, but I need it to, to be sliding a little bit. See, it's starting to slide right here, but it's not quite making a break for it yet. So go like this, 
And I will caution you not to do this with wet hands touching ones you've already put on there or you will take a piece of it off. Okay, see how beautiful that is? Now, I'd like anybody to do that with water slide paper. Good luck. See, it's almost effortless. Don't mess with that too much because it likes to stick to things. Oh, see, I, I broke my own rule. Okay, there we go. All right. Okay, so that's number one. Number two, without my design to refer to, Hmm. Why don't we pause? Hi. Okay, I wasn't going to show this part because, you know, if you can't mix epoxy, why are you even thinking about doing a cup? So, here's the thing, though. I don't like doing it by volume in the sense that I don't want a bunch of sticky, cruddy stuff sitting around. So, what I did is I figured that for me, for a typical cup, not a mermaid cup, a typical cup, um, I would use, I think, about a tablespoon of each. So, what I did is I took my handy-dandy little drug scale and I weighed it by, as I, I set it up by volume first, then I weighed it, and then now I have notes. So I know how much it weighs, because these have very different weights. Uh, it's actually much more forgiving than people lead you to believe, because I was really doing it wrong for a while by weight, I thought I was so smart. And there was probably a third off, and I still only had one cup that I didn't do right, so, or that stayed sticky, but it's always best to do it the proper way. So that's what we're gonna do. So I have discovered that one tablespoon of the A weighs 19 ounces. This is the heavier one. And one tablespoon of the B is much lighter and it only weighs 13 ounces. So I'm gonna double this for purposes of, oh wait, no I'm not, okay. I'm, I keep forgetting which cup I'm doing. So I'm just gonna do a normal amount of epoxy. So let's see, you turn it on and then you put your little cup on and you hit the tear button, which brings it down to zero. And then you take your A side and you just squeeze it on in till I get to 19 or thereabouts. Uh, okay, yeah, see I went a little bit over, not gonna worry me. If I could do a third over before, I think I'm okay. So then you just hit it again and you tear it and you get it down to zero. And then now I have to do 13 and this one comes out pretty fast so it's much, much thinner. But what I really like about these bottles and what, oops, <laughs> is when you stop squeezing, they stop pouring. Unfortunately, I didn't stop squeezing. So let me just add a tad more because you know, I'm anal that way. Okay, we'll call it good. And now I'm just gonna mix up the epoxy. I'm not mixing any colors with it this time. Um, this is just gonna be clear on top of the mermaid cup and then we're gonna add alcohol ink to it as it's turning. So you're gonna get sort of that watercolor effect. I could do that beforehand, but my issue is that I don't want the mermaid to be sitting on top of it because it is clear tattoo paper, it is not white. So if I did the design underneath, I'm afraid it would be a little too busy so I'm gonna do it after it's turning. So I'll mix up my epoxy and then we'll come back. Okay, first of all, I don't know what your rotisseries are like, but I discovered the really difficult way that if this turns the other way, it will eventually, the cup will fall off. The thing will come out. It has to be going towards me. So I don't know if that's for you too or something to be aware of if you're just starting out make sure that it doesn't torque itself right on off because that's pretty sad to get up in the morning and find your cup stuck to your board. It's just not bueno, so, all right. So I am a big believer in just using my good old hands to do the epoxy. It just, you know, smoosh that sucker around. And I put it on the bottom too. Epoxy is a lot more forgiving than people would have you believe. They, I don't know if they like to intimidate people or what, but um, I don't find it that scary. I, you know, once you get the hang of it, and particularly if you have a turner like this, you're golden. You, it's, it's nothing to do. Just wear your gloves. If you're allergic, okay, that's a whole other thing. But, you know, I'm not, so that's not my issue. I realize some of you have been having problems with some brands of epoxy. I'm grateful that 
that's not one of my issues. Okay, so that is all down in there. So now Vicki, who I'm making this for, really wants some purple in here. So, you know, I have a hard time arguing with that because it's a mythical creature anyway, so who's to say that she didn't swim in purple water? So that's what we're gonna go with because, you know, I like purple and Vicki wants purple. So this stuff is self-leveling, which is pretty amazing in and of itself. So I go through a lot of gloves. Uh, you might wanna buy yourself a big old box of them because I, I, I kid you not, it's a lot of gloves. And mine's kind of noisy, so my uh, tech support, i.e. my husband, is going to fix that soon. I have another motor to use, too. This one came out of a grill that we've had for 10 years. We never use the grill. Okay, so now I'm going to change gloves. Last time I didn't put on fresh gloves to do the alcohol ink, but this time I'm going to because my hands turned out to be purple. So let me grab some more gloves in my messy, messy spot here. Okay. So before I start with the alcohol ink, I'm going to start dropping some of the um, glitter. Because what we're going for here is bubbles. That's, the, that's what we want it to read as. So I have this iridescent little glitter. Now I will say something annoying about this. It comes like this, and despite all my best efforts, it gets mixed. So when you get it, before you open the other side, take it out and put it in another container. I'm gonna have to buy some more just because I, we tried sifting it, didn't work. So I'm just gonna have to deal with a few speckles, but I don't think we'll be able to see it. So you need to decide where you want your bubbles. Bubble, I'm a diver, so I know that bubbles tend to be coming from the plant life, or obviously fish, if they're around. So we're gonna give some little bubbles to our little, our little dude and some more in the seaweed, because you know it's seaweed, it would have bubbles. Okay, I don't like to cover up the mermaid with it, but I did ask the customer how much uh, glitter she wanted, and she said, go for it, so I'm going for it. And this is such a pretty glitter, it's hard not to enjoy it. And it really does read as bubbles. So apparently this little seahorse has big lungs. So now, while the glitter is on here, this is the first layer of two layers of epoxy. So what I learned on my last one is not to put down the name until you're done uh, for your final one because I put down the name and then I needed to put some color on it and I lost the name. So I ended up cutting the name exactly the same again um, and using a wet method to get it on there so that it matched up. So it kind of, it, it doesn't even really have a shadow. It's just kind of cool looking. Okay, so now we have our glitter on. Glenda, does that look like enough glitter? I think so. You think so? Okay. So now we have our glitter on. And again, know that you can repair any sort of divots and stuff um, in this process next time because I will be doing another nice thick layer. I mean, not so thick that it's gross, but enough to hold everything down and to hold the name there because I like to give it a little bit of dimension. If you put the name on top, then that's a layer between it and the base of the cup and then that's where you start to get the dimension from. So let's see, of course I messed up my glove again. All right, I guess I'm just gonna get blue fingers or purple fingers. All right. I've never dropped purple on aqua before. It should be nice. We'll see. I can't swear that it's gonna be fabulous, but here goes nothing. Now what I should say is that I did um, hold some of, uh, put some of this on paper uh, to see how it would look. And it looked pretty nice. It actually looked beautiful mixed with the aqua alcohol ink, but I'm afraid that if the two mix, albeit it's a beautiful color, I'm afraid it'll cover the mermaid. So this is this could be an experiment. I could be redoing this cup at any moment, but I don't know, it's not moving very well. You know what, I'm gonna use my heat gun to make the epoxy run a little bit more, so excuse my noise. Nope. 
Now it's starting to flow a little bit better. So as you heat, you'll start to see some drips here and there. Don't worry about it. There's plenty of epoxy to go around. See how it's moving? Now it's interesting because when I did it with the aqua, I didn't have to heat it to get it to move. So, you know, I'm not sure how I feel about that aqua. I mean that purple. I mean, I'm a fan of purple, but I don't know. I mean, I think I'll like it when it's done. I hope. Let's see. You know what? I'm, I'm going to go crazy. I'm going to put a little bit of aqua. It's running a good bit on this side now. now okay, good. You, now that you heated it up. Okay, yeah, that was my issue is it was looking too chunky. Like it wasn't looking terribly indigenous. Oh, okay, now, yeah, I see what you're saying. Okay, I'm starting to like that a little bit more. But I still have to just push the limits and add some aqua just because I need to see, you know? And worst case scenario, I have to do it over. Well, you know, gosh, another 45 minutes out of my life. I think it'll be fun. All right, there goes, see that aqua soap, howdy. <laughs> I just, I, I, I like the aqua. I'm sorry, Vicki, it's gonna be a mixture. I can't do it without one without the other. Oh, whoops. And there's, it's also acts a little bit like a resist too, which is kind of fun. So yeah, you just kind of put it wherever you think it looks like it might need it. See now, I feel like that purple was, was basically hiding my seaweed. So let's see. We'll go with this and we'll let the purple and the aqua mix it. Oh, what a beautiful color when it mixes. There's a couple of spots over here where it has started to mix. I guess I'm going to heat some more. Get some more movement. It's like I wish I could turn my cup turner up to like, you know, mock speed to get it to do more of the work. And I did upgrade my heat gun recently because my little embossing one was not cutting it. Because I like it to move the resin and the little embossing one was like, <coughs> and couldn't quite handle it. So, all right, let's see. We'll see what's going on. Ooh, ooh, cells. I'm a fan of cells. I'm cell positive. Um, that's something I'm about to get into for you people who are following, um, is I'm gonna start doing some dirty pours with uh, acrylic paints and silicone. And a dirty pour, all that means is that you're taking your paint and you're putting it all in a container together without stirring usually. And you just put layer on top of layer. You would take it upside down. Oh my gosh, that's so pretty. You would take it upside down and you'd put it on your board, turn your board upside down and then pull up the cup and let it run. And then you, you have some, ideally you have some silicone in there and that creates what is known as cells, which is it breaks apart the ink and leaves like fibrous looking things, which is actually really cool. Okay, this is starting to look nice. All right, I'm a fan. You get to keep your purple, Vicky. So, let's see. And some more aqua. See, now, now see, this is what happens. Oh, that's the other thing. People are so scared of alcohol ink, it won't come out. Um, yeah, a little rubbing alcohol, it's off your hands. So do not let it freak you out. Don't let people freak you out. Ooh, now see, that's, that's really cool. Oops, maybe it'll come back around. Let's hope it doesn't, well, I don't know. Ah, I love it. Okay, cool. <gasps> that's a beautiful color. So you just kind of keep going until you're happy with it, which means I may never stop because I'm never happy with anything. Oh my gosh, up there, did you see that? Oh, okay, yes, I'm happy. All right, I'm gonna do some more movements. It's all about the flow of the resin. That's what's gonna push your stuff around and what's gonna change how it looks. It thins it out, it mixes it, that's what, what gives you what you're looking for, is see the movement? It's pretty amazing what heat can do. You can just kind of shove it wherever you want. And it's also very good for getting any sort of latent bubbles out. Oh, Vicki, this is gonna be beautiful. 
Okay. I'm a believer. Oh yeah. Now, you don't want to overdo it or you're just going to drip everything you did off of the cup. <laughs> I've seen people doing that with the, uh, with the dirty pours is they get these beautiful cell buildups and then they keep tipping the board and then they lose what I loved that they were just doing. So that might be something that might make me insane. So we'll see if I can handle it. Oh God, this is beautiful. Okay. Oh yeah. I'm happy. See, look at that resist. When you drop it, alcohol on top of alcohol, you get that incredible resist, which is so cool. Okay, right here needs a little bit of purple. Right here needs some purple. I don't know that I would ever wanna do it with just purple. I think that the aqua is necessary. I think that would, that's what brings it to another level. It starts to make it really look like See, I told y'all I'd do a tutorial if somebody else ordered a cup in. Well, you can all thank Vicky Yano for that. Vicky Yano Shaw, I should say. She's going to be keeping herself happy through winter in Idaho with this cup, dreaming of being at the beach. She was raised in Hawaii, same as I was, so she's got the same issues of missing it. So, like, that purple is just hanging out there a little bit too much. I want it to move. So, I shall make it move. It doesn't get to have anything in. See how that... Oh, my gosh. See how you can just make resin your bitch? I would say think of my friend. You're lucky that's all at first. Um... You're doing a great job, Linda. Ah, love it. Okay. Crafting has a tendency to bring out the foul language. <laughs> yes. <laughs> On many occasions. Yeah, this is going to look like Monet was underwater. Not that I'm comparing myself with Monet. He couldn't do this. <laughs> Oh, now see, there's a naked spot. I think I, I too much epoxy off, but again, this is my first, my first layer. So all will be forgiven in the next layer. I think I'm gonna not add any more at this point because I don't wanna bury my, my mermaid. She's pretty integral to the beauty of this piece. So I'm just gonna move this so everything's blending beautifully. And then I'm gonna let it turn for, See, right there is dry and it's not mixing like it should. So, apparently, oh, smoke, bad idea. <laughs> it is so beautiful, it's hot. <laughs> so, I'm going to let it turn for a little while and set up a little bit. And then, I don't think you guys need to see the rest of this. You'll see it when it's done. Oh, yeah, I actually have it smoking. Awesome. So I took off too much purple there. I'll keep messing with it till the cows come home. I can't help myself. It's still smoking. Awesome. <laughs> I'm sure this is great for our lungs. Probably. <laughs> we didn't need them for anything. Lungs are for sissies. No fear crafting. Ah, should be our new business name. Actually, I almost changed mine to portable art. Portable artworks. But then I thought, what if I want to do something that's not portable? That would seem to not be the right choice. Yeah, I'm really going to leave it alone this time. Really, I am. I just need to add to that purple right there a little bit. And then I'll, I'll be done, I promise. So pretty. So pretty. And if I don't like the way that it all is, if I feel it needs a little bit more color later, not a problem. When I put down the next epoxy, I'll just drop some more color. It'll just give it that much more dimension. So I think it's all going to end up the way I wanted it, though. We shall see. 
But yeah, from Corona, California, we're done. I will be posting photos at the end of this video to show you the finished product and enjoy. Okay, so I, I'm bringing you back because I did an additional step. I decided to try something different, which, you know, I was clapping for the beauty <laughs> and I, I'm doing it with alcohol, just plain old rubbing alcohol and look at the beautiful cells it's creating. You can also do this with like a, a silicone lubricant, but oh my gosh, this is like doing a dirty pour without doing a dirty pour. It's fantastic. I mean, anytime you can get cells to show up, it's a, sort of an amazing effect. I think it's pretty cool. Now I'm seeing a bare spot right there, which you know, can't have that. My head might explode. But look at the, oh, that's gonna be, and when, once I put her name on there with that beautiful iridescent Cricut vinyl, the opal one, that's gonna be so stinking pretty. Yeah, see here's, it needs a clap, it needs a hand. Let me give you a hand. You're lovely, you're beautiful. See, it appreciated. And I think this needs a hand. It needs a little appreciation. Normally, I wouldn't have this many bare spots, but um, I was videotaping. And, you know, it kind of pushed me to be braver than usual. But, again, everything is always forgiven with the second coat. All right. But I just wanted to add that to tell because people say, how did you get that? Well, this is how I got it. I basically clapped my hands over it with, with alcohol, just plain old alcohol. Because again, if you'll remember, alcohol inks react to alcohol. It creates a resist. Yeah, okay, yeah, cool, I'm a fan. All right, that's it, peace out.